All right, let's dive deep into lung cancer today. You know, we've got some excerpts here from Is Lung Cancer Curable If Detected Early? Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to break it all down. Yeah, it's a really, really important topic. And there are a lot of misconceptions out there. Yeah, for sure. I think one of the big ones is that it's, you know, a death sentence. Right. If you get it, which is not necessarily true. It's definitely not. Especially if, like the title of this document says, it's caught early. Yeah, so let's maybe start there. Is lung cancer actually curable if it's detected early? Yeah, the answer is yes. Right. But, you know, early detection, that's the real key here. Lung cancer is a tricky one. It can grow for years without showing any symptoms. Wow, so you might not even know. You really might not know until it's unfortunately progressed to a later stage. So how long are we talking here? Well, it depends on the type. But uh, for some types, like squamous cell carcinoma, it can take, get this, Almost eight years to reach a detectable size. Eight years. Eight years. So that's a long time. Yeah, and that's why screening is so, so important. Okay, so let's talk screening. This document specifically mentioned LDCT scans. Right, low-dose computed tomography scans. What are those all about? So basically, it's a painless way to see inside your lungs. Okay. You lie down in this kind of donut-shaped machine. It takes maybe like 30 minutes. And it takes these, you know, really detailed pictures of your lungs. So who should get one of those? The U.S. Preventative Services Task Force okay. recommends them for people aged 50 to 80 who are current or former smokers and who have a significant smoking history. What does that mean, a significant smoking history? So they're talking about folks who smoked, you know, at least a pack a day for 20 years or more. Okay, so like heavy smokers. Right, heavy smokers are people who smoke for a really long time. Got it. So if you fall into that category... Definitely get those annual LDCT scans. But what if you've never smoked? Is lung cancer still something to worry about? That's a good question. And it's a common misconception that only smokers get lung cancer. Actually, 10 to 20% of cases in the U.S. occur in people who've never smoked or have a minimal smoking history. Wow, I had no idea it was that high. Yeah, it's definitely something to be aware of. So wh what else besides smoking can put you at risk then? Well, secondhand smoke is a big one. You know, being around other people who smoke. Okay. And then there's radon. Radon? Yeah, it's this naturally occurring radioactive gas, and it's actually the second leading cause of lung cancer in the U.S. Wow, I've never even heard of that. Yeah, a lot of people don't know about it. But it can seep into homes from the ground. So even if you don't smoke, there are still these other risks lurking out there. Exactly. And that's why it's so important to be aware of the potential risk factors. And to, I guess, listen to your body. Yeah. And if something feels off, to get it checked out. Absolutely. Don't ignore those early warning signs. Speaking of warning signs, the document mentions some general cancer signs. Yes. Like unexplained weight loss, persistent fatigue, changes in your skin. Right. But those can be pretty vague and could be caused by a lot of different things. Yeah, for sure. Anything more specific to look out for? They highlighted one that I think is worth mentioning, changes in phlegm color. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. So like if you have a cough... Yellow or green phlegm could mean you have an infection. Right. But if you're seeing red or pink, that's a more serious red flag. That's a good tip. I did not know that. So red or pink phlegm, definitely go see a doctor. Absolutely. Early detection is key. It all comes back to early detection. It really does. Okay, well, this is already so informative and a little scary, to be honest. I understand. It's hard not to feel some fear when you're talking about something as serious as cancer. I get it. But I think knowledge is power, right? The more you know, the less scary it becomes. That's a good point. And knowing what to look for can help you catch it early. Exactly. Okay, so we've established that early detection is crucial. But what does early actually mean in the context of lung cancer? How is it staged? And what do those stages tell us about survival rates? Good question. Lung cancer staging is kind of like a roadmap. It helps doctors figure out how far the cancer has spread. Okay. And it goes from stage one, which means the cancer is localized, hasn't spread, all the way to stage four, which means it has spread to other parts of the body. And the survival rates are different for each stage. Yes, very different. The source highlights that stage one lung cancer has a nearly 65% five-year survival rate. Wow. So if you catch it at stage one, there's a pretty good chance of survival. There is. But here's the thing. By stage two, that number drops to 40, 50 percent. OK, that's a big drop. Yeah. And unfortunately, stage four is not considered curable, although treatment can help extend life. 
So the message is clear. Early detection is absolutely crucial. It really is. Especially with this whole silent growth thing. Right. You might not even know you have it until it's reached a later stage. Yeah, that's what's so scary about it. But that's why we're talking about it, to raise awareness and to encourage people to get screened. So knowing that lung cancer can develop and spread without any noticeable symptoms, what are some of the key takeaways for our listeners? Well, the biggest one is don't wait for symptoms to appear if you're in that high risk category. You know, 50 to 80 years old, current or former smoker, significant smoking history. Talk to your doctor about getting screened. Even if you feel fine. Even if you feel fine. And even if you're not in that high risk category, be aware of your risk factors. And if you have any concerns, talk to your doctor. Early detection is the best defense we have. It really is. Okay, that's some really good advice. Thank you. Of course. And, you know, before we move on, there's another misconception I want to address. Let's hear it. A lot of people think that if you develop lung cancer, it's automatically a death sentence. That's just not true. While lung cancer is a serious disease, treatments have advanced significantly in recent years, and many people go on to live long and fulfilling lives after diagnosis. That's really good to hear. So even if you are diagnosed with lung cancer, don't lose hope. There are still options. Right, and we'll be talking about those treatment advancements later on. Absolutely. Okay, well, I'm already feeling much more informed about lung cancer. Good. That's what we're here for. Yeah, I'm ready to learn more. Great. We've only just scratched the surface. There's so much more to explore. I'm all ears. Okay, so before the break, we were talking about how important early detection is. Right. Catching it early can really make a big difference. Yeah, absolutely. But, you know, even when symptoms do appear, it seems like people sometimes just ignore them. You're exactly right. And this document actually brings that up. It's this tendency to kind of just brush off those early warning signs. Yeah. Why do you think that is? I think sometimes it's fear. You know, nobody wants to think about the worst case scenario. Yeah, I get that. And sometimes I think it's just a lack of awareness. People might not realize that certain symptoms could be serious. Or maybe they think it'll just go away on its own. Right. But with something like lung cancer, that delay in getting medical attention can have serious consequences. Yeah, I mean, yeah. the longer you wait, the more time the cancer has to grow and spread. Exactly. And it can make treatment a lot more challenging. But it's got to be tough, right? Like, if you're not feeling that bad, mm. it's easy to just kind of push it to the back of your mind. Oh, for sure. It's human nature to avoid those uncomfortable thoughts. Right. But the thing is, those early stages of lung cancer... They often don't have any really debilitating symptoms. So it might just feel like a minor annoyance. Yeah, like a cough that you think is just allergies. Or you're tired, but you blame it on stress. So how do we change that? How do we get people to pay more attention to those subtle signs? I think it starts with education. You know, people need to understand that early detection really is their best chance. Yeah. And doctors need to create an environment where patients feel comfortable talking about any concerns they have. Even if they seem small. Exactly. Even if they seem small. It's like that saying, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Absolutely. And in this case, that ounce of prevention could be a simple conversation with your doctor. That's a really good point. Okay, so we've talked a lot about smoking as a risk factor. Right. And it's a huge one. But this document also mentions something interesting about survival rates. Between smokers and non-smokers who are diagnosed with lung cancer. Yeah, it's kind of surprising. You'd think that smokers would have a lower survival rate. Yeah, for sure. But actually, the source says that lung cancer is more curable in non-smokers. Wow, really? Stage for stage. Huh, I wonder why that is. There are a few theories. One is that lung cancer in non-smokers might have different biological characteristics, and so it responds better to treatment. Okay, so it's not just about who gets it. Yeah. But also how the disease itself behaves in different people. Exactly. And another theory is that non-smokers, they tend to get diagnosed at earlier stages. Because they're not attributing their symptoms to smoking. Right. They might be more likely to go to the doctor <laughs> for a cough or something that a smoker might just ignore. That makes sense. Okay, so we've covered early detection. We've talked about the tendency to ignore symptoms. And we've learned about this difference in survival rates. But let's get into the specifics of lung cancer itself. Yeah, let's dive into the different types. Okay, break it down for me. So the two main categories are small cell lung cancer and non-small cell lung cancer. Okay. And non-small cell is much more common. It accounts for about 80 to 85% of all cases. And within non-small cell, there are different subtypes. That's right. The most common ones are adenocarcinoma, squamous cell carcinoma, which we talked about earlier, and large cell carcinoma. And each of those subtypes is different. 
Yeah, they each have their own unique characteristics and they can behave differently. So is it important for patients to know which subtype they have? Absolutely. It can really impact the treatment decisions, the prognosis, even the likelihood of the cancer spreading. So knowing the type and subtype is really crucial. It is. Okay, so let's say you're diagnosed with lung cancer. Mm -hmm. What does treatment actually look like? Well, treatment for lung cancer has come a long way. In a good way, I hope. Definitely in a good way. You know, traditionally it was surgery, chemotherapy, and radiation. Right. But now there are all these new options like targeted therapies and immunotherapies. I'm unpromising. They are. So targeted therapies, they're like these little guided missiles. They zero in on specific molecules in the cancer cells. Oh, wow. And they attack those cells while leaving healthy cells alone. So less damage to the rest of the body. Exactly, which means fewer side effects. And what about immunotherapies? Immunotherapies are really exciting. They basically help your own immune system fight the cancer. So they boost your body's natural defenses. That's right. So it's like giving your immune system superpowers. Yeah, kind of. And these new treatments, they're making a real difference. They are. They've really improved survival rates mm -hmm. and the quality of life for a lot of patients. That's amazing. And the research is constantly evolving. There are new treatments and approaches being developed all the time. That's really encouraging to hear. Okay, so we've covered a lot of information about early detection, the different types of lung cancer, and the new treatments. It's a lot to take in. It is. But I think it's all really important for people to know. I agree. So to recap, early detection is key, but even when symptoms appear, people sometimes ignore them. Right. Which can unfortunately delay diagnosis. And we've debunked that myth that only smokers get lung cancer. It can affect anyone. And we talked about the importance of understanding your specific type and subtype. Because that can really influence treatment decisions. And then we touched on those exciting new treatment options. Targeted therapies and immunotherapies. It's a lot, but it's all good to know. Absolutely. So now I think we should shift gears a bit and talk about what all of this means for someone who's actually diagnosed with lung cancer. Yeah, let's talk about the patient experience. Okay, so let's imagine someone's listening right now mm -hmm. and they've just been diagnosed. What advice would you give them? That's a great question and a really important one. Okay, so let's imagine someone's listening right now and they've just been diagnosed with lung cancer. What advice would you give them? Where should they start? Well, first of all, I just want to say, you know, this is a tough diagnosis to get. It's a lot to process. Yeah, absolutely. It can be incredibly overwhelming. It really can. And there's going to be a lot of emotions. You might feel scared, anxious, maybe even angry. And that's all completely normal. Yeah, it's a lot to wrap your head around. It really is. So first and foremost, just allow yourself to feel those feelings. Don't try to bottle them up. And it's so important to have a good support system in place. Absolutely. Lean on your family and friends, and don't be afraid to seek out professional help if you need it. Like a therapist or a support group. Exactly. Yeah. Talking to someone who understands what you're going through can make a world of difference. There are also some great online communities for people with lung cancer, right? There are. Connecting with others who are facing similar challenges can be really helpful. So you're not alone in this? Definitely not. Now, once you've had some time to process the diagnosis, I think the next step is to gather as much information as you can. This document really emphasizes that knowledge is power. It is. The more you understand about your specific type and stage of lung cancer, the better prepared you'll be to make decisions about your treatment. So ask your doctor all the questions. Yes. Don't hold back. Ask about the different treatment options, the potential side effects, what to expect during treatment. And if you're not comfortable with one doctor's opinion, it's okay to get a second opinion. Absolutely. You want to feel confident in the decisions you're making. And you know, while you're focusing on treatment, it's also important to take care of yourself. Self-care is huge. Make sure you're eating healthy, getting enough rest, finding ways to manage stress. Like exercise, maybe some meditation. Exactly. Whatever works for you. And you know, besides support groups and therapy, are there any other resources available? There are a ton of great organizations out there. The American Lung Association, the Lung Cancer Alliance, the GO2 Foundation for Lung Cancer, they all offer incredible resources. Educational materials, financial assistance, even just a community of people who get it. It's a whole network of support. And don't forget about your healthcare team. Right. Your doctors, your nurses, they're all there to help you through this. Don't be afraid to reach out to them with any questions or concerns. It's like having a whole army on your side. That's a great way to put it. So to anyone out there who's dealing with a lung cancer diagnosis, 
We just want you to know that you're not alone, there's help available, and there's hope. Keep learning, keep fighting, and keep taking care of yourself. Well said. And remember, knowledge is power. We've covered so much ground today. We have. It's been a real deep dive. From the silent growth of lung cancer, to the power of early detection, all the way to these incredible new treatments that are giving people hope. And we talked about the importance of finding support and advocating for yourself throughout the entire process. Thank you so much for joining us on this journey of exploring lung cancer. We hope you found it informative and maybe even a little bit empowering. Until next time, stay curious and stay well.